Hi, I'm Simon. Welcome to Watercolour Wildlife. In this tutorial, I'm going to take you through watercolour colour theory in 10 minutes or less. I've done an hour long ish video on this, uh, sent it to my editor and he freaked out because it was so long. He says, you've got to condense it into 10 minutes, no longer so that people can digest it easily. So here it is, watercolour theory in 10 minutes, Phil. Right, I'm going to start my clock here. So I've got a timer set on here, 10 minutes, go. First thing I want you to learn is that there, you know, this is what you had at school, red, red, blue and yellow. And they told you you can mix any colour out of those three colours, it's all you needed and they lied essentially. You know, certainly with watercolour paint, you definitely need more than that. And one phrase I want you to get in your head, one thing I want you to learn is split primaries. So what you're after is a warm and a cool primary. So instead of just having a one blue, one yellow and one red, um, I'm going to extend that out so that I've got two shades of each of those primaries. That's called a, a split primary palette. Um, and I want you to think of those as a warm primary and a cool primary. So hands are yellow is a cool primary. It's closer to the blue side. So you can see on this color wheel, um, yellow, you know, this side of the yellow is closer to the green, so it's going to be cooler. This side of the yellow is closer to the red, so it's going to be warmer. Um, this red, you know, it's got more orange in it, so it's going to be warmer. This red has got more blue in it, so it's going to be cooler. Likewise with the blues, this is a warmer blue and this is a cooler blue. So just get that in your head. Warm, warm primary, cool primary. Um, now I'm going to show you one thing quickly. I use this Daniel Smith set. I'm not sponsored by them, but I kind of like to be. Um, I use this Daniel Smith set for examples. It's really good. It's called the Essential Set and it basically contains these six colours that are a perfect split palette, a split primary palette. I'm just going to move that out of the way. Something else I recommend you buy to learn colour theory is a colour wheel of some description. There are lots out there. Um, there's a link to that in, on the website. Um, so you can buy that one. Right. What I'm going to show you very quickly. Let's just move these out. Now I've got... I've got a red. Let's put that there so you can see that. I've got a red there, so this is what you'd have at school. You know, you've got a red, a blue, and a yellow. And watch what happens when I try and make a, a lovely purple. So I've got this red and this blue here, and I'm gonna go for a lovely purple. And this is actually probably one of the combinations that you just see what happens here. I get a purple. Looks a little muddy. And then the same here. So I've just got a yellow and a blue. I might get a nice, am I gonna get a nice green out of this? Might be all right, because that's quite a cool yellow. But again, it's not very vibrant at all. Six and a half minutes. Same here. So I've just got a yellow and a red. Just gonna mix these together and just show you the kind of orange that I can get there. I mean, that's not, that's not too bad, an orange. Um, but watch what happens when I do the same thing. So I'm gonna, I've got these colors here. So these are my, my warm primaries. Let's have a look, that's there. That's a warm primary. Oh, that goes there. And that goes there. So watch what happens when I mix a Rather than mixing a this warm this warm blue with a warm red, and I've got a warm red and a warm blue. When I mix those together, just look at the vibrancy that we've got there straight away. Look at that wonderful variety of textures, just and sorry, colours. Look at that compared to that. And then again, so instead here I had a, a 
a warm blue and a cool yellow. And here I've got a cool blue and a cool yellow. And just look at, look at that vibrancy. Look at that lovely clean color. Gorgeous. I've actually put too much blue in that side, but you know, I can mix in some of this yellow. I can mix it about quite a bit. Still staying, staying really nice, vibrant. You know, there's a lovely, lovely range of, um, of tones in there. This, you can see this, you're comparing this and this, really muted, really muted kind of green. Very quickly, just under halfway through. Look at this lovely orange we're getting. And that's by mixing a warm orange and a warm yellow. Um, and just look at that. I mean, that's quite a nice orange, but it's just, it's not as vibrant as this one. Okay, so instead of using your three primaries, I want you to split your primaries in, into these warm and cool versions of each one. And I'll just run through the colors that I've got. So I've got a Hansa yellow, and these are available in this Daniel Smith set. Um, so there's a Hansa yellow and a new gamboge, and that's a cool yellow and a warm yellow. And here I've got a, a pyrrol red and a quinacridone rose. And that's a quinacridone rose is a cool red, and the pyrrol red, it, is it pyrrol scarlet? Sorry, pyrrol scarlet is a, is a warm red. And here I've got French ultramarine, which is uh, a, a warm blue, so it's got much more red in it. So it's closer to the red on the color wheel. So you've got blue and red. So this end of the blue spectrum is gonna be, it's gonna be much warmer, much more red in it. So if you mix those colors that are closer together on this color wheel, um, so the closer you can get them, you know, what you don't wanna do is mix a warm blue with a warm yellow. So I'll just show you very quickly what a warm blue and a warm yellow does. So I've actually, that was a cool, this was a cool yellow and a warm blue. If I just take some warm, warm yellow, and I'll show you down here because this is the, the wrong side. So if I take a warm yellow, and a warm blue. So you see these are much further apart on the color wheel. And these two colors are much closer together. These two are much further apart. So if I put this into here, you see the kind of green I'm getting? So it's not a great green, really muted. I mean, you, for mixing muted colors, fantastic. But in terms of keeping vibrancy, you're not gonna do that by mixing colors that are far away uh, on, on the color on the color wheel so far away from each other so I've still got two minutes to go um, one thing very quickly the other thing you've got to learn last two minutes and that is complementary colors so colors that are opposite on the color wheel are referred to as complementary colors and those basically cancel each other out so if you mix an orange and a blue you're going to get some form of gray and likewise, if you mix red and green, you're gonna get gray. And if you mix purple and orange, you're gonna get gray. So I'm gonna try and do a quick example of just mixing a gray. So if I said purple, uh, purple and yellow I need. So if I was gonna mix a purple, I'm just gonna put a little bit of the cool, my cool red, warm blue, And then I've got a kind of, maybe I'll go warmy yellow. And I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of this there. And I'm gonna mix my purple first. I've got a minute to go. So I'm gonna mix this purple. Just show you what a lovely color I get. And then just start adding in, you know, the opposite of purple is yellow. So when I start adding this yellow in, What's gonna happen is it's just gonna gray all of this out. 
And you see how muted that is going. And it's gone. You know, you need to adjust to get a perfect gray. Put a little bit more blue in. It's a little bit warm this. So if I put a bit more blue in, you're gonna end up with this very gray, muted. And you can get lots of tones out of that. You see, it's quite a purpley, purpley gray. Could add a little bit more yellow in. And if you wanted to warm it up or cool it down, four seconds to go. Okay, so that's it for this 10 minute tutorial on this, this delve into color theory, this very brief delve into color theory. I uh, hope you've got some value out of it. Um, as I say, I've done a much longer version of this, so it's an hour long tutorial uh, that goes far more into depth. Uh, I take a slower pace and I'll explain things much more concisely. So go and watch that one. Um, the next one that follows on from that very well is how to lay out your palette. So go and watch how to lay out your palette and the, also the color theory one work together very well, the full length version of the color theory one. So hopefully I'll see you there. Take care.